morning. <laughs> and it's so good to see you all out tonight. Uh, as we uh, get ready for worship, is there anything at all that we want to share together, announcement or prayer concerns, any prayer burdens, special prayer burdens we would like to share tonight? Yes. Yes. I have three of my friends, not well. Can you pray for Beverly Bridgers, um, Angela Mills, and um, the Evans boy, Jamie Evans. Anything else we'd like to share before we get ready for worship? If not, I'm going to go right on to the lighting of the Advent wreath. On this most holy day, we light all four candles in our Advent wreath, and we are reminded of the expectation, preparation, proclamation, and revelation of the coming of Jesus Christ. Now we light the Christ candle. The Christ candle, and in it we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of that baby born in the manger. Now to the call to worship. This is a holy night. It is a night in which the impossible was about to happen in Bethlehem. This is the evening creation stood still and held his breath, for God was doing the most wonderful and dangerous thing. On this night we remember the words of the prophet Isaiah, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them has the light this is the evening when God embraced humanity from the inside as one of us from birth to death. We sing like the angels, glory to God in the highest, and may there be peace and goodness to all people. And now let's sing hymn number 157, Away in a Manger. <coughs>
please be seated. I'm going to read some scripture to you now, uh, beginning with uh, our theme scripture for this whole <laughs> Advent season, Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, and give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. And then a mirror scripture of that messianic promise. These words were spoken 500 more than 500 years, 600 years before Jesus was born. And it was a time of repeated trouble, tribulation, warfare, conflict, violence, failure, again and again and again. And through it all, these words of messianic promise were lifted up to the people. So I'm going to read you now the part that we usually focus on at Christmas, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah 9, verse 1. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people rejoice when they divide the spoils of battle. For the yoke of his burden, the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it, to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth, and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So the people took this promise to heart. Year in and year out, through invasions and occupations and warfare and failure and trouble of every kind, they look to the fulfillment of this promise. Hundreds of years later, in a place near Bethlehem, the following two stories were put together. First one is the story of the three kings, and it's found in Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. When Jesus was born, in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? 
For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born, and they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, You, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people, Israel. Then we turn to Luke's gospel, the story of the shepherds and angels. This will be Luke chapter 2, um, verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to be enrolled, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went there to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid. Behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Then they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. All who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to sing hymn number 163, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> Joyful all ye nations 
tonight we're just going to talk for a minute about our challenges with regard to complexity and simplicity. Because you may have noticed, and I, I think probably all of you have noticed, things are getting complicated. Everything we try to do is more complicated than it was. Now, I want to give you one example of a recent experience where this kind of settled into my mind about how everything is more complicated. Uh, just a few weeks ago, Peter's battery died on his car. 2009 Ford Focus. Now, um, changing a battery in a car <laughs> is simple. There, there really isn't anything to it, you know? You got two wires, a black one and a red one, right? <coughs> and it sits on a little tray with a little metal strap over the top of it, and you loosen the bolts on that little metal strap, and you <coughs> loosen it up, you take the battery out, you put the new battery in, and you connect the two wires. Now, y'all know I usually bring something. I was going to bring the battery wire tonight. <laughs> but it's kind of greasy, you know, so I, I didn't want to do that and serve communion, so I left it at home. <laughs> okay. How complicated could it be? Well, first thing is we couldn't find the battery and all that mishmash that they put under the hood, right? Okay, find the battery get a flat bar and pull the battery out from the car because it's not put in like it used to be on a little flat tray. No, it is stuck back in there kind of gangle wise, just stuck in between a bunch of stuff and you can barely even find it, much less get it out, get a flat bar on it and jimmy it out from where it was and get it out. <laughs> it has three wires connect to it. Three. Not two. Three. No, there's a ground and a hot wire. That's how they're all supposed to be. No, 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 no. This one has a little computer attached to it. It turns out, after a lot of inquiry, to be the battery management system, which is supposed to tell the computer in the car that the battery is dying, which it did not do. Right. So, and, and then we went to figure out, well, because I busted the thing when I was taking it out of the car, now you need another one of them. And, and we went to uh, Ford and checked in about, well, how much is one of those things? $189. Oh, for goodness sake. You know how I fixed it? I used a pair of wire cutters and cut that Hummer right off. Okay. And then we stuffed the thing back in the car, a new battery connected it up, and then it's kind of like, okay, go, okay, start, 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 start. And it did. Praise God. Changed the battery. Okay. Everything we do is complicated. Think about it. Going to the drugstore for goodness sake, checking out at Walmart, putting gas in your car. It's all increasingly complicated. And it has occurred to me, and I believe this is a truth of the universe, that complexity will increase as time goes forward. And it's very easy for those of us who are a little bit older to remember a time when everything was so much more simple. So much more simple than it is today. And, and it's also worth remembering and noting that if you are young, if you are young, you're not going to notice this com thing called complexity because everything is just normal. This is the world you're born and live in. It's always been this way. You just boop to boop to boop. You go along with it for a while till you get to be like me when you look back and say, oh, it's getting complicated because complexity increases with time. It's a law of the universe. Now, what I want to share with you is the ultimate simplicity of this story that I read to you tonight. 
It is not a complicated story. It is not a complicated faith. People were living with hardship, with complexity, with troubles that came again and again and again. They were dealing with hardship, with illness, with injury, with failure, with conflict, with all the troubles that people have. They were dealing with that and they had a promise and it was a very simple promise, a very simple promise. The people who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, upon them a light has shined that there would be a promise of salvation, a promise of forgiveness. The, the forgiveness is so important because it means that we don't need to hang on to the resentment and the frustration and the anger that we have over all that's gone wrong in our lives. All that trouble, what they did, what they said, what happened, all that mishmash and mess that went on in the past is gone. And we can simply accept it and forgive it. That was the idea. In order to demonstrate this to us in time, in the fullness of time, God sent his son to this world to be born among us, to live among us, to let his light shine among us, to heal people and, and show people the way. And he died because it was a complicated world and there was all this trouble and all this hardship. He upset the wrong people. They put him to death and he rose again from the dead. And if we believe that, if we just take that narrative, that simple story into our hearts and make it the foundation of our lives, then we follow him through all the trouble, all the turmoil, all the mess, fuss, and bother of living. We go right through it all to eternal life. And this celebration we call Christmas is all about his birth. It's about that light shining in the darkness. It's about us receiving the grace the goodness and the glory that Jesus Christ made and gave to us that transcends it. It goes beyond all the complexities and all the problems and all the failures we might ever have. And it brings us eternal life. And that's what this celebration is all about. And so this Christmas, just think of the simplicity of it all. Let the complexity go. All the complexities of all the troubles and all the situations and whatever would distract you from the simplicity of faith, just let it go. Let it go and let your heart be filled with the joy, the goodness of the Savior who is born this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me have my serving elder come forward to the front now. And this sacrament is also very simple. There really is no complexity in this. Everyone who seeks a closer walk with the Lord Jesus Christ is welcome to receive this sacrament, regardless of the church you may call home, where you come from or what you're thinking, you are welcome to this sacrament. And, and the sacrament is a way of us knowing that the body of Christ, the body of Christ is us, the believers in Christ. The body is broken. The body is given unto the people and by the breaking and giving of the body, the people receive life anew. That's the lesson of Jesus. The cup, the blood of Christ, that cleanses us from the sin. That, that's the, the portal of liberation that lets us have this newness of life and not be bound to all the troubles of the past. But just to say the past is the past, it's forgiven, it's accepted. We're living a new life 
in Jesus Christ. So as you receive the sacrament this evening, take the bread and hold it for a second until we've all been served and let us all take the bread together. That is a symbol of the unity we possess in the body of Christ, that we are the body of Christ. Then when you receive the cup, just go ahead and drink it right away. That's a symbol of your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so the gifts of God are served for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to send forth your Holy Spirit and bless these elements and bless us, Lord, as we gather to celebrate this sacrament. For we do so, Heavenly Father, remembering the Lord Jesus, remembering his life among us, his birth in Bethlehem, his growing up, his teachings, his miracles of healing, remembering the death he died, remembering his return to life, and that his resurrection from the dead is the guarantee of our salvation. And so, Lord God, bless this time, bless this sacrament, let these elements be true and lasting symbols of your presence with us and in us. In Jesus' name, we ask this blessing. Amen. So the scriptures tell us that on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus sat at table with his disciples. He took bread, <laughs> he blessed it, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup, he blessed it and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. The Apostle Paul tells us that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. And his return into our lives is exactly what we're looking for tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, the blessings of Jesus. And so, the gifts of God for the people of God. Everybody served. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, take and eat. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing.
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for us all. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this Christmas time. We thank you for an opportunity to gather with our families and with our friends. We thank you, Lord God, for all the little ones. And Lord, as they play with the wrapping paper and as they open their gifts tomorrow, the joy and the laughter and the playing and the fun and the goodness, we lift it up to you, Lord God. Bless our families, Heavenly Father. Bless our children. Bless our grandchildren. Bless our great-grandchildren. Bless our families, our friends, our neighborhoods, and our community. Bless this church. Bless each of us, Lord God, for we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we lift up to you all those that we know need a special blessing tonight. And so, Lord God, uh, we, we pray for Beverly Bridgers, for Angela Mills, and for Jamie Evans, who are ailing this evening. And we, we ask you, Lord God, for the blessings and the power of healing. Lord God, I say a very special prayer for Mary Mills, Lord, this evening, that you would bless and strengthen her, encourage her, Lord God, be with her family, bless them at this time lord and and heavenly father for ray moore who is really struggling but getting better had a good surgery lord god be with ray and with lois bless them and keep them heavenly father we know so many folks and each one of them we lift up in our hearts and in our minds gracious god we ask your blessings the blessings of Jesus. Wherever there is trouble, wherever there is pain, wherever there is sorrow or illness or injury or negativity of any kind, Heavenly Father, from our faith, let a light shine for healing. For Alvin Bottoms, Lord God, who's going to be having surgery the day after tomorrow, we ask you, Lord God, in the name and by the power of Jesus, that that surgery would be effective and would just go fine for him. And so bless Alvin. Bless all those we know, Lord God, who need a little healing. Heavenly Father, these prayers we lift up to you, a few spoken out loud, but all the many others that are in our hearts, we lift up to you, praying the way your Son taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we're going to sing hymn number 154, Silent Night.
Let us rejoice in Jesus. He is born anew.